Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dr. Denise Williams of the Healing Place Global Alliance, and we are excited that you are joining us for our weekly um, scripture study, but tonight we're having our communion service. So we're not going to further delay our time. We're going to ask Minister Monica Darga to come forward at this point, and she is going to lead us in a word of prayer. Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for the fellowship that we're having with these lovely ladies and with all of you that are seeing us on Facebook and Zoom. Lord, please continue to guide us through these uncertain times and let us all be safe. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. We thank God for Minister Darga being on the line with us. I believe we're all ministers. If you're saved and you're walking in this, this life, we are all ministers of the gospel because guess what? If someone asks you to lead them to Christ, we are a minister right then and there. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we can all minister the word to whoever needs it at any time, at any place. So uh, we see Minister Lawan, Elder Lawanda Austin is joining us right now. I hope you guys have seen the... Um, announcements announcements we know that uh, next month we will be back here on the 21st having our communion communion is every third thursday night of the month yes. every third thursday night so we're not going to prolong the time we already had our opening prayer minister felder are you ready for tonight didn't she say she was just driving or was that Pastor Aileen? That was Pastor Aileen that was driving. Okay, let's ask Minister Feld, is she ready? I know she was kind of over a football game. Minister Felder, are you ready? Minister Felder? What's that click, click? Ma'am. Are you still driving? I'm still driving, but... um. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, so that's fine. We'll ask you to come back another time because right now you're driving. We really want you to be safe. Safe. <laughs> so, amen. We are going to take a look at, um, hold on, let me get my Bible and we're going to take a look at a piece of scripture for tonight. Amen. Because we all got a scripture in our spirit somewhere. Well, well we should anyway. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to take a quick look at Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. We're going to go up there. What verse? Starting at the first verse, Matthew 25. Okay. And if we can, let's mute ourselves unless we have a comment or a question or a scripture. Amen. Matthew 25. Okay. So I'm reading out of King James. This is Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 10 virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took their oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And when they went to, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Amen. So we've read twenty um, Matthew twenty five, the first to the tenth verses, and may God add a blessing to the reading of His word. Five wise, five foolish, and you know it's it it. it 
The five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins gives us an analogy of life that while we are here, we have to prepare to meet Jesus every day of our lives. We can't wait until the last minute and then go run out and buy oil or go run out and, and do what we need to do. Walking with the Lord is a lifestyle that we have to do every single day. Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship with Christ. It is a lifestyle that we adapt to. And each day we learn a little bit more about God, which is the beautiful part about it. We learn more and more about the Lord, more and more about his word. And this is why preparation is so important. Anything we do in life that's an accomplishment, we have to do it through preparation, um, education, um, a career option, um, even even even. Um, regular lifestyle stuff, having babies, buying a home. You have to prepare your finances if you want to buy a home. You have to prepare your, your body if you're ready to have a baby. Everything that we do requires us to prepare, prepare, whatever it is. And this is the thing is that we have to learn that if you put the work in, you will reap the reward. The virgins that were wise put the work in. They bought enough oil. They waited and they measured how much they were going to need. But the, the foolish virgins didn't do, didn't take it as seriously. And the thing is, is that we have to understand that we live in a world where people don't take God seriously. They don't take it seriously. They don't think there's anything relevant to it. They don't want to learn the lessons that they need to learn because it requires requires them to make a lifestyle change. And sometimes people don't want to give up what they're doing and that's fine, but they have to also realize that at the end, there's going to be a consequence attached to that decision to reject Christ. So we have to remember that this is the type of world that we live in and we have to hold down our standard um, in living for the Lord every single day. Because the world is not going to accept us. They are going to call us peculiar. They are going to say we're weird. They are going to say that we are strange. But we have to hold up the bloodstained banner every single day. We have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our integrity every single day. No, there's no such thing as a little lie. There's no such thing as a little stealing. There's no such thing as it's okay. It's not okay. It may be okay in God's and man's standards, but what does God have to say about your actions? What does God have to say about your conversations or the things you watch on television or those little pay-per-view things that people watch that you in your house and you think nobody is nobody knows that you watch because it will reflect in your spirit. What's in you is what's going to come out of you, right? So a lot of times we keep thinking that we're hiding things, but you're not really hiding it because whatever's in your spirit is going to come out. What do you treasure? The Bible says where, where, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. If you treasure your relationship with God, nothing but blessings and positive things and God-filled things are going to come out of your mouth. But if you are not treasuring a relationship with God, all kinds of things are going to come out your mouth and they will not be godly. They will not be godly. So we have to remember that we have to be more like those wise virgins. We have to be calculated each time that we move in this kingdom called this earth realm, because we are in this world, but we're not of this world. We are citizens of another kingdom. So we have a dual citizenship as remnant people. OK, because God speaks to his remnant. He speaks to his people. He speaks to those who are listening for instruction. And we have to listen for God's instructions through our prayer life, through fasting, whatever it is that he directs us to do. You may not be directed to fast for a while, but we have to keep our ear to the ground to know what is God speaking into your spirit in this season at this time, because we want to be like the wise virgins that were able to go in there was no there was no hesitation when the door was open they were able to walk in they were qualified they were prepared and they met the lord we want to be the same way we want to be qualified we want to be prepared we want to be able to meet the lord whenever that time comes whether we last until the rapture or whether our life the lord calls us home we want to be prepared to meet the lord no matter what amen so we have to learn that th there's a consequence, or I'll say this, not even a consequence. I'll say that there, it, there's a cost. You know, the old folks used to tell us all the time, there's a cost. The anointing costs something. 
So it costs you something. You have to be willing to sacrifice time. You have to be willing to sacrifice sometimes personal sacrifices of turning down your plate. Sometimes we have to do that. But whatever it is that God instructs us to do, it may seem like you're losing on the front end, but on the back end, you're going to get blessed. So we have to remember that we don't lose anything from the Lord. We lose in the world system, in the world's eyes. They feel like we're not enjoying the party, but they don't know on this side of the story, we are partying every day with the Lord. We are, we have joy every day with the Lord. Because as Monica um put in the chat, you leave your if you leave your spirit open, all kinds of spirits are going to overtake you. So this is where we go back to, we got to guard our heart, just like the, the wise virgins, they guarded themselves. They secluded themselves after they bought their oil and they waited patiently for the bridegroom. So this is what we need to do in this season. We need to get in our spiritual huddle, support each other and make sure that we are in the right huddle so that when the bridegroom comes, when he comes to claim us, we are ready to meet the Lord. So I'm going to open it up for any comments, questions, or scriptures, and then we will move on from there. If anybody has a comment, a question, or a scripture that relates to our lesson about being prepared and being wise, the, the floor is open. Amen. No comments, no questions, no scriptures tonight. Anybody else? If not, we're going to move on. I like the fact how you refer to us as a spiritual huddle. Because you know how the word says we're two or three are gathered in his name. And we come together, whether we hold hands or we're in a group. I just like the terminology of a spiritual huddle. Amen. And that's what we have to do. The Bible says that we're supposed to bear one another's burdens. So we have to help each other when one is weak. We have to help them out. And that is our call as believers. We're supposed to help. In other words, we're all supposed to have that sense of community to make sure everybody gets there. We help everybody get there. Everybody should achieve their goals. Everybody should be able to make it to heaven. Everybody should be able to call on any one of us on this line and say, hey, I need prayer. Or, hey, I'm going through a tough day. And we will be able to pray with them and know that they are in a safe place. See, the five Amen. wise virgins, they created that safe place for themselves. They all made sure they were prepared. They all made sure they were patiently waiting. But the five foolish virgins didn't take it so seriously. So at the end of the day, they were not ready to go in to meet the bridegroom. And then they came to the to, to, to the wise virgin, but then it was too late because they said, listen, we won't have enough for us and for you to make it. And while they were away, they missed an opportunity with God because they were not prepared. And we don't want to miss any opportunities, right? We want to be ready. We always want to be ready to meet God. We should always be ready to pray for somebody. We should always be ready to, to, help, to, to, to donate and to help somebody if and when we can. That is our, that is our responsibility as believers. That's our responsibility. Yeah. Well, I, I got a comment that just came into my heart. It's about that oil. They, they, the, the five virgins who had no oil wanted the five who had the oil to share their oil. And they said, it may not be enough for you and for us but the thing about the oil the oil represents the anointed god's gifts that he has for you is for you and even if you wanted to you really can't give your gifts to somebody else they they have to work at that thing themselves the word says work out your own soul salvation so, so they got to work that out for themselves and so that the fact that they weren't prepared speaks on their mindset concerning their relationship to the to the to the bride and the bridegroom it's supposed to be a celebration when everybody comes to a celebration they're supposed to be ready glory be to god and yeah. they just weren't ready yes that's unfortunate that they were not ready mm -hmm. and here's the thing is that you know when we, when we, well, before we knew the Lord, we prepared for everything, right? If you come into the barbecue, you bought, you, you know, you bought the mac and cheese. Somebody bought the Franks. Somebody bought the buns for the Franks. Somebody bought the eggs, the, 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 the salad, the egg salad. So why is it that when it comes to God, we don't prepare as much or as diligently as when we did when we were without Christ? 
because we prepared for everything. You knew what you were going to wear. You knew how to, to have gas in the car. You knew who you was picking up and everything. But when we come into Christ, we get so relaxed. And then we don't want to, you know, we kind of haphazardly do things. And then we say, oh, well, God understands. And God does understand, but he also has a standard. Even with that understanding, he has a standard. God expects excellence from us. I believe there's a scripture in the Bible that tells us that we should do everything with a spirit of excellence. We're going to call on Minister Felder at this time to make some remarks and see what God has dropped in her spirit, because I see her smiling in the corner. Minister Felder. Ma'am. <laughs> Yeah, you said um, you came from Matthew 25? Yes, ma'am, Matthew 25, the first 10 verses. We were talking about the five wise and the five foolish virgins. <laughs> you know, it reminds us of ourselves. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we, we say foolish things and sometimes we say wise things. But at the same token, you know, God says that we should ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding you know, we should know what is the difference between the wise and what is the difference between foolish. You know, sometimes we we tend to get in a mode to where as we, we get in ourselves and we, we start to think about things that have happened in the past or things that are in the future and they are not, co they are coherent, but they're just not at a, at a place the way as it rational thinking, I would say. And we have to learn how to think before we speak instead of just lashing out saying something. So to me, that would be is using wisdom, you know. Um, and if you're in a process the way as you're using um, something foolish, we should think, should I have said that? You know, we have to watch what we say. We have to watch what we do. We have to be mindful of the things that we say and what we do. because as we are being women of God, this is no men on here, but as we being a women of God, we have to be mindful of what we say because we are watched all the time, all the time, not only our body language, but what we say. We are very critique about what we say, you know? And I found that people, if even if you don't say the right word or you're paraphrasing, that's not what it says, you know? So sometimes you, some people, you have to take them right straight to the word. Some people, you don't have to take them to the word because God says that if we study to show ourselves approved, right, love, the word of truth, we'll know it. We will know it. So to me, that's your own wisdom. But when you got somebody critiquing you and you're trying to rationalize it, or trying to prove a point, to me, that's foolish because he don't want us to have to rationalize his word, you know, because of the fact that we shouldn't have to. We are all been given a measure of faith. We all have been asked to ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We all have been also asked to read, to show ourselves approved. We, we've been asked to read. So, we shouldn't have to go by what other people say, you know, or what other people do. And, and it brings me back to um, when you was talking about the foolish and the wise, it also bring me back to um, the word that was given on Sunday when he was talking about um, having, showing his faithfulness, you know, when showing his faithfulness, that means that we are loyal. We are devoted, you know, not only we are devoted, we are consistent, we are truthful. So we are being truthful, we are being loyal, we are being, we are doing what God will have us to do. That again comes back to being wise. That comes back to being wise, but because we are, we are called to do a certain, we are called to do a certain job. Uh, or in a certain position. So as we have been given that position by Christ, we don't go by what we want to do. 
We go by the position that he's given us. So we are to perfect. We are to perfect our calling, I would say. You know, so we are fulfilling what he has asked of us. But we also still being critiqued because he said, I have given you the finished work. You know, but others may not think so, but they're still trying to critique you in the word. And they're not reading it. We're the only Bible they see, but they're still trying to figure out whether you are telling them the truth and then they're not reading to get the truth. You know, so that comes back to again, having knowledge to know and ask some wisdom. And then it also comes back to being foolish and using wisdom. Everything comes back to the word. It's nothing new. It's just new faces. That's all. And his promise is true. His promise is true. His word do not come back void. So all we got to do is just continue to stand on his word and continue to be wise because he, he gives us wisdom every day, every day, every day. So I thank God for a, a basically telling us about the, the wise, the, the foolish, you know, about the five virgins and and the foolish ones and the the ones that have wisdom, you know, and, and basically because we deal with that every day. Because if everybody was wise, what would we do? If everybody was foolish, what would we do? So we have wise and foolish. And he, what did he say? He said, I would do the separation. We can't do the separation. He would do the separation. Because if we're given a measure of faith, your faith could be higher than mine. Mine could be higher than yours. We may be at the same level. But if we stay at the same level, we may bump heads. But if we are not, we, are, we each one teach one. Each one teach one. So if we was once foolish, we can become wise. And if we were wise, we can become wiser. So we have to look. He said, when I was a child, I did childish things. But when I became adult, I put away all those childish things and grow. So we can't go down. We can only go levels. He brings us up in levels. You know, so we have to look at, he said, every, every round go higher and higher. It's like Jacob's ladder. People talk about Jacob's ladder. A ladder, you can go down that ladder but you also come up that ladder. And you want to go higher. Every round goes higher and higher. Thank God for the word. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We thank God for you and thank God for the word. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Anybody else have any comments or questions or scriptures about that lesson? And then we're going to go into our communion in about five more minutes. Anybody else has anything they'd like to share? Unmute yourself now and share away. Anybody else? Amen. That was a great word. Thank you, Minister Felder, for expanding on whatever um, Pastor Denise had said. Um, you, you expanded on that being prepared thing you, you talk about how to get prepared that's an awesome thing and we got to read we got to be about it yes yeah, the awesome thing it was an awesome thing thank you so much Amen. Amen. thank you so much so we thank god we thank god we thank god we thank god and it's going oh wait a minute okay there we go yeah. i don't know why those things are popping around like that but we mm -hmm. bless the lord and um, it's a it's a beautiful thing. Now we're going to move towards our communion. It's eight thirty seven. I want to get the communion in. So um, let's start preparing our our sacrifice tonight for our communion. Britt, Britt, if you are on the line and you can hear me, please unmute yourself and pray for our communion portion of the evening, if you will. Okay. You want me to do that now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Father God, I come to you giving thanks.
definitely a word that you brought to us uh, through Pastor Denise tonight. Um, it was a refreshing word. It was a word to keep us on the right track. And just hearing about the wise and the foolish um, virgins and what it takes. You give us you give us everything that we need to know what it takes to become wise if we're foolish in an area and to also teach those that may be foolish in an area where we are wise. So in all things, Lord God, not only are you blessing us, but you're showing us how to be a blessing to others. You're setting us apart. You're giving your you're allowing us to be your light in a world full of darkness in order to bring other people to the same place that we're at to experience the joy that is found in you, to experience the peace that is found in you, to experience the kindness, the gentleness that is ex that we get when we're in your presence, Lord God. So first, we just want to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory for even choosing us to be a part of that blessing, Lord God. Nothing and no one can should ever come in between that first. But also, Lord God, we thank you that you, you've seen past our sin, you chose us, and we are here now and able to bring other people with us. So, Father God, we thank you for that word. We pray that we continue to get in your word for ourselves. We continue to experience you for ourselves, that we're not just wanting to eat off of the plate of others, that we're also choosing to get in and have and sit at the table with you ourselves, Lord God, and have a full meal that you give us, Lord God. We thank you that we can pray to you, Lord God. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your kindness that is readily available to us and as well as people around us, Lord God. And we just pray that we continue to be set apart. We continue to be the remnant that you have called us to be, that we live set apart and we make the choices every day to be set apart. We thank you, Father God, that you give us the tools to do that. And Lord God, as we enter into, um, as we're about to take communion, and just praying for the hearts for myself, Lord, first, and for those on this um, call right now about to take communion. We do not take this lightly, Lord God. So we pray right now, Lord, that you just search our hearts, wash our hearts, and bring anything to our minds, Lord God, that maybe we need to um, repent of, maybe we need to offer forgiveness to, or maybe we need to just um, forgive those that that aren't going to forgive that aren't going to apologize for something. I don't know what it is, Lord God. We just pray that you search our hearts um, before we take communion. We don't want to be guilty of your blood, Lord God. Um, so right now, Father, just going to take a few seconds, just um, search us, purify us, Lord God. Um, speak to us in any way that you feel that we need to be spoken to before we take part of this communion, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you so much, God. Thank you for forgiveness. We thank you for grace, Lord God. We thank you for this communion, Lord God, that we can take part of, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And Father God, just thank you for each and every woman that's on this line and each and every person listening on the live, whether now or on the pre-recorded um, or on the recorded, I apologize, the recorded message, Lord God. We thank you for them as well. If they do not know you as their Lord and Savior, Father, we pray and that they do get to know you, Lord God, and you bring people into their lives that can um, speak to them and uh, bring them to you, Lord God. So we just thank you as we're about to take communion. Um, yeah, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 I hope everybody has um, prepared their sacrament and have everything ready. Amen. We're going to be reading 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, and I'm going to be beginning at the 23rd verse. I am reading out of the King James Version, whatever version you have of the word, you can follow along with me. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us all eat together. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us all drink together. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. 
Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are sick and many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. And that is uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the 23rd to the 30th verse, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And that concludes what we have in store for you guys on tonight. Amen. I'm going to share my screen so we can see the announcements. Um, does anybody else have a comment, question, or scripture before I shift again? And we are going to share some information with you guys for upcoming services. Anybody else? We're going to ask Reverend Pastor, Carter. You... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Elder Lawanda. Yeah, I, it was just something on my mind from the lesson, and I'm sorry I'm coming up on the back end of that. But how when it reminded me of, I think later on in 25, where he said, they said, Lord, Lord. And I had never seen it in that part of the scripture that you brought out tonight. Mm -hmm. They came and they knocked on the door saying, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. And he didn't let them in. Mm -mm. And I was just, and it also reminded me about Noah, that once God shuts the door, you won't be able to get in. So like you were saying, the minister Felder was saying, we got to get prepared now. We got to be ready now to meet the bridegroom. Just like when you're going to get married, you don't wait to the last minute to start preparing to get your wedding dress and your accessories and all of these things. So like you say, we got to be prepared. So I just want to thank God for the lesson tonight and what was said. But it just reminded me like the door was shut. Mm -hmm. And even though they cried out, Lord, Lord, he didn't open the door. So mm -hmm. we got to be ready. Yeah. We need to get in a hurry about our souls. Like we get in a hurry. We make sure our car get the oil changed. We make sure we buy new tires when it's necessary. We make sure the roof on the house gets fixed when it gets worn down. But when it comes to our soul, people are so, they, they seem to feel mm -hmm. they have so much time. And when you realize how short life truly is, time is winding up from the time you are born. Because that clock starts ticking from that first breath, from that first time that doctor slaps your bottom and you cry, the clock is ticking. And we all we are living this life because we know that there's an end. And where you spend eternity, that is up to you. So yes, they cried, Lord, Lord, but the Lord did not open that door because they had their chance. And this is why it's important to be obedient to God, because you don't know that may be your only chance. And that mm. opportunity may never come back around again. So we have to remember that we have to stay focused and ready to meet the Lord every single day. And I'm not saying it's supposed to be a, like a burden to follow God. But what I am saying is that once you fall in love with the Lord, you're going to want to live for him every day because the joy of the Lord is our strength and we can walk with God and he will be our strength. And once you get a taste of that, you're not going to want to go back to anything else. Amen. So we thank God for that. Anybody else before we shift and go into the announcements? Pastor Aileen, we haven't heard from you all night. Do you have anything you'd like to share at this time? I know she was driving earlier. No, I just thank God for the word tonight. It, um, it truly encouraged me to continue to seek God and to be ready because life is very short. And with all that's going on, it's shorter, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, God said that the times would be shorter, you know, because of all that's going on. Mm -hmm. And and also when um, uh, when they said, Lord, Lord, like uh, Elder Austin said, the Lord means that he's our source. So God could have supplied them, but he wants us to stand on our own also. So, you know, he gives us the, the roadmap, the, the guidelines for our life, which is his word. And all we got to do is read it and we will be prepared for anything, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I just want to just say, just to encourage us to just continue to stay in God's word. Amen. Amen. We thank God for her. I'm going to share the screen one more time so that we can see our upcoming announcements. Upcoming announcements. Amen. Not so much this one, but these are our upcoming announcements. This is our monthly communion. It's going to be next month on October 21st at 8 p.m. October 21st, 8 p.m. 
We'll be right back here on Zoom. That information is also on the website. So you could go there and get that information. Tomorrow night, St. John's Baptist Church of Copeg, Reverend James Carter and Reverend Aileen Carter, they invite you to their weekly fellowship call. It is Friday evenings at 7 p.m. I'm going to post this on the website too. Friday evenings at 7 p.m. That is the information. If you need more information or want more information, let me know and I will get that to you. On Saturday, we have Elder Lawanda Austin. She has a call in scripture study. Um, they are doing amazing teaching on the kingdom. That's the call in number. Rediscovering the kingdom of God is what it is called. You can get on there on Saturday. On Sundays, um, Christ Fellowship Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. David L. Kelly II hosted Sunday, Sunday School on Zoom, hosted by Minister Dolores Gerald. You could join that Sunday School on Zoom, 9.30 every Sunday morning. She will be there to teach every Sunday morning. And Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m., Minister Cynthia Felder of the Good Shepherd Holiness Church. Her pastor is Daryl Brooks. She is on um, live on the radio, www.scgqradio.com. Go there and you will be able to hear her live as she ministers the word. Monday nights, we have our prayer call. Monday night, the Healing Place is having a prayer call. Please note the new number, 351-999-3693. 351-999-3693. There is no more access code. Just 351-999-3693. That number is also for our call in scripture study on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. 351-999-3693. You can find more information, the same information on the website, which is listed there, thebrokenvesselspeaks.com. Amen, amen, amen. So we thank God for each of you coming on the line tonight with us. And those of you that have joined by way of Facebook, we thank God for you as well. Um, we are here every Monday and Thursday. And if there's nothing else, we are going to end the recording. I'm going to ask, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who can we put to work tonight? Bless the Lord. We're going to ask Minister Lawanda Austin to close us out in a word of prayer. And then we're going to say good night. Minister, Minister Elder Austin. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we come before your throne of grace and mercy with thanksgiving in our heart, our Father, to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, O oh Lord God, for you alone are worthy, you alone are great, you alone are awesome, you alone are mighty. We thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, our Redeemer, our Healer, Lord God, our strength, our joy, our peace, O oh Lord God. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit, O oh Lord God. We thank you for clothing us in your righteousness, O oh Lord God, no righteousness of our own father God creating us a clean heart renewing us a right spirit help us to walk closer to you oh Lord God help us to meditate on what we have heard tonight oh Lord God that we want to be ready Lord God we want to be ready ready when you come oh Lord God help us to keep all in our lamps oh Lord God help us not to slumber and sleep oh Lord God but help us to watch and stay awake oh Lord to watch and pray oh Lord God let us draw closer to you in our relationship relationship and with our walk with you, oh Lord God. Let us not take anything for granted, Father God, because what is it to gain the whole world and lose our soul, oh Lord God. And I know I don't want to lose my soul and I know my sisters and brothers, oh God, they don't want to lose their souls either, oh Lord God. So, oh Lord God, let us realize, oh Lord God, we got to walk with you in the way that you have designed for us to walk with you, oh Lord God and do what you have called us to do, oh Lord God. So may we grow closer in relationship, laying down denomination, laying down religion, and picking up that intimate relationship with you, oh Lord God. We thank you for every family on this line tonight, oh Lord God. We thank you for the visionary of this ministry, oh Lord God, and her family and her loved ones and everyone that is on here. Keep them in the ark of safety, Father God. We thank you for Zoom land, oh Lord God. We thank you for Facebook, Lord God. We thank you for everything, Father God. We praise you, we love you, we honor you, oh Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen.